This is Poppy, yes that's his actual name, a player who hits Grandmaster with lethality Poppy support. But the best part is, he did it without Flash, trading the summoner spell for a speed based assassin build, taking Ghost, Ignite and Yumu's, turning Poppy into a champion more like Hecarim, but still having great CC, catching enemies out, flanking in team fights, and surprising enemies with his damage even in Grandmaster. This pick can reach highs of 700 movement speed, no longer being just a support. She is isn't ganking for you, she's coming to your lane, killing the enemy laner, and then sprinting off with phase rush to get to her next play. With some great new tricks for season 14 like soloing dragon at level 4 on support, and one special new support item to really bring this build together, our player says that this strategy is not that hard really, and to be honest he's not that good of a player, but thanks to this strategy even he was able to hit grandmaster. I interviewed him to find out exactly how, but there is one small problem. This pick is incredibly good but it's also very high risk and he dies so often. But one pick that's incredibly good but not high risk is this week's sponsor, the Alienware M18, the laptop I've used for gaming and all my work for the past 8 months and I love it. Let me tell you why and also show you some crazy new technology from Intel that's pretty mind blowing. The M18 is an 18 inch super portable super powerful gaming laptop. First off the specs which are incredible, up to the Intel i9 RTX 4080, so from budget to battle station, whether you're on a support Janna's budget or a fed Hecarim jungle farming for 40 minutes budget. The M18 has every option. It's perfect for anything I need to use it for, from editing, recording or playing any game. My favourite and the most special part is the screen. 165Hz Quad HD, it's cinematic. Having this powerful of a laptop lets you work anywhere, and of course with Alienware you have their amazing customer support, so if anything goes wrong you have them there to fix it. But Alienware and Intel have also just released a new laptop, the M16R2, which contains all the latest Alienware and Intel tech including the Intel Core Ultra processor. Processor. Having one of these new processors is like playing Nasus, except you start the game having a thousand stacks. Not only is it great for normal gaming like in laning phase, but in intense games or light game, it can upscale your resolution to give you both better performance and higher image fidelity. It uses machine learning. It can double your performance but also save battery life, letting you play for even longer. So if you want your own M18, link to get one is in the description, as well as a link to check out this amazing new laptop with the Intel Core Ultra processors. Thanks to for sponsoring this video. Back to our player with the in-game name Poppy, also known as Raiden. Poppy was the first ever champion he purchased way back in season 6, buying her simply because of her looks. Which back then is surprising. He spent his hard earned IP and played a ton of her to prepare for ranked. In season 7 and 8 he began to grind, finding new champions, and tryharding to see which rank he deserved. But after reaching his diamond promos, then going on a 17 game loss streak down to plat 3, he quit ranked. Instead of having fun it was simply stressing him out, so for season 9 he went back to playing for fun in normal games. This all changed when he joined an ARAM 1v1 tournament. He chose his favourite champion Poppy as what else would he pick in this tournament meant for fun. Loading into the ARAM fountain he checked his gold, 1400. The tank items didn't really make much sense to buy in a 1v1 where he couldn't base, but one item stood out to him at a perfect price, Serrated Dirk. He could buy this with boots or potions, take electrocute and cheese enemies instantly, killing them even before the game really started. By season 12 this had become his main playstyle in Summoner's Rift. At the time he would play jungle, building lethality and duo with a Yumi support, sprinting around the map together one shotting enemies, often ending games with more than 20 kills. However every game his AD carry would hate the Yumi player, so his duo Yumi got sick of being flamed every game and our player was on his own from then on. At the time Umbral Glaive was an extremely cheap item and very strong. He would build this and then go straight into full tank. One cool trick with this item is that Poppy passive is not considered a ranged attack, so the wards still get one shot. He took this into support. By season 13 his poppy support strategy had improved even more, going for either Eclipse or Prowler's Claw. This was his most successful season yet, peaking at Diamond 1 by the end of the year, but still unable to hit masters or above. But in season 14 all of this changed. He completely ditched jungle poppy due to her favourite items Prowler's Claw and Sunderer disappearing. One big problem was that Umbral Glaive became much worse, never giving him enough damage on support this season, so he decided to give Yumu's Ghost Blade a try, and realised that combining this speed with the cheapest boots he could buy, and water walking in his runes, gives him a stupid amount of roaming and flanking power, also taking phase rush in his rune page to help with fast trades and repositioning in fights, speedy lethality poppy support was born. However it was not that simple, every game he would get a ton of hate. For example a game with Tyler 1. Tyler was not happy about his poppy support stealing kills, calling his build guard 
garbage. But by the end of the game, our player had the most damage and had hard carried Tyler to victory. Our player knows this pick is viable and he's really good at it, so he does not care about the hate. Hitting Grandmaster this season with a 70% win rate, currently the number one on his server. But why is he playing Poppy support? Well the champion alone has amazing CC, and when comboed with the speed from this build it's super easy to catch enemies. But it's not just about catching enemies, with this build he's also able to roam and provide enough damage to kill someone without much help from his teammate. Instead of something like a Janna or Alistar who only have CC set up, this Poppy is coming to your lane, killing the enemy and then leaving. Not ganking for you, but ganking to get a kill for herself. In laning level 1 our player starts E. He likes to invade as it's great CC and has great setup in the jungle, especially with all of the new walls. Ideally he never wants to leash so he can start the game in this bush, closest to the enemy tower. Whichever side he's on he has an easy wall stun available whenever someone walks in, so he can force out a cheese early summoner spell, as well as a big health advantage in lane. Ideally he walks out of the bush, auto attacking with the passive, and then E stun them into the wall, followed by another auto attack to proc the phase rush, letting him escape with minimal damage taken. From there he chills until level 2, where he takes his Q. This is usually where poppy support becomes quite difficult, as high elo enemies just won't stand against a wall so he can never get a wall stun. But our player doesn't care, he can still look for trades even without this stun. The best way he's found to do this is to use the passive on a minion with the relic shield, instantly giving him a shield of protection. He can then E onto the enemy, Q into auto attack, procking phase rush and sprinting away, with most of the damage being blocked by the shield. If he can do this trade a couple of times to get an enemy low, all it takes is them mispositioning and he can ghost and run at them, pinning them to the wall for a kill. With ghost he has a movement speed advantage so enemies must flash or they're dead. The ghost is a much lower cooldown, so he can always repeat this play later on for a guaranteed kill with enemies having no flash. Level 3 he takes his W, and now rather than having to only engage, Poppy specialises in denying enemy plays. This is amazing against loads of AD carries and supports. Things like Pike, Tristana or Zeri will completely destroy the way they want to go for 2v2s. It's also amazing against ganks, as Poppy can ruin most junglers engages with it. For example Elise in Q, his dash will get blocked, Viego's stun can be dodged, Graves dash, Kane Q, Kha'Zix jump swatted out the air, absolutely no jungler is reaching him or his AD carry, and this pick gets even better with an AD carry on his team who can chain CC, for example a Jinx or a Caitlyn trap, or a Vayne condemn. However some lanes are just very hard, and when he's in one of these lanes he will get pushed in, unable to engage, but our player is fine with that. Poppy can use the passive shield to safely play under tower and wait for her opportunity, for example the enemy mispositioning or her getting a gank. It isn't even that bad to be pushed in on Poppy as even if the enemy support starts roaming first, Poppy can catch up to them using Ghost, so the push advantage does nothing as long as he makes a good decision. Here's our player's first specialty, if he's able to get a kill early on and able to get two long swords and a potion, he can solo the first dragon. How? Hold on bro. How? As long as it's Mountain Dragon. For this specific timing that's the only one he can kill by himself, chaining his abilities and the shield to block any damage. However later on in the game Poppy support can solo any dragon, especially once he buys some damage, ideally basing early for serrated Dirk. The reason this is so good on Poppy is the great AD ratios on her abilities, especially the second part of her Q and both parts of her E, the push and the hit against the wall. So buying lethality converts her combo into something that actually deals a shocking amount of of damage. At level 6 he takes his ultimate, which is super versatile. The easiest is using it as extra CC in his kill combo, however one special play this poppy does. After he's killed the enemy bot lane or forced them to recall, he often still has his ultimate as he doesn't usually use it in the fight. So he can ult the wave to instantly push it, allowing his AD carry to get a free reset, and when they return to the lane they'll be there with a pushing double wave. This both gives your AD carry a great timing window to base and denies the enemy team a whole wave, as their double wave of CS will kill it much faster. But the main impact of this ult is at objectives like Dragon. This ult alone is worth having a poppy on your team, as it can completely win a fight by itself, something only a few supports are able to do. He focuses on knocking the enemy jungler away from Dragon so his team can secure them, as well as take an advantage fight. One small trick he likes to do is to charge his ultimate up as a bluff, able to then press the recall button to save it for later, giving it only a 15 second cooldown. But laning is not the main purpose of this build. Roaming 
thing is. The faster he can get Rectrix, the new 900 gold AD and movement speed item, as well as swiftness boots, the quicker he can leave lane. He tries to get his AD carry ahead early on, giving them any kills, but as soon as he sees an opportunity in mid or the enemy jungle, he goes for it. Early on he's going for ganks in lanes, but then he almost always leaves lane for when the grubs spawn, ideally arriving 10 to 20 seconds before, ready to take a fight. His goal is to slam one enemy into a wall and give his teammates an easy target to focus down to win the fight. While this is all happening, hopefully he wants a passive AD carry like Israel, as he never really wants to return to bot lane again, completing his new support item that really brings the build together, Blood Song. The way this item works is that after using an ability, your next basic attack deals 150% base AD as physical damage, but more importantly, it inflicts the enemy with a weakness effect for 6 seconds, so they take 5-10% to increased damage from all sources, which includes both parts of Poppy's Q, which she can guarantee will land thanks to her stun. Blood Song is what really makes this build good, without it your damage is so much lower, it also amplifies your teammates damage, making it so much better than the other support items for Poppy, of course also having built in damage reduction, making this pick less risky. In mid game Poppy support is all about cheesing from bushes, trying to catch as many enemy champions as he can in sight lanes or in their own jungle. You may think this is the time of game where not having flash will really affect him, and it's true. Playing normally he would really start to struggle to make plays, as he is squishy, and enemies all have flash advantage so they can avoid his engages with good reaction time. However he is able to play around this weakness by invading with sweeper and getting behind enemies, so that no one will see his engage coming. This has become especially effective with the new jungle, often able to dash over walls with his E, and find lots of new angles to get stuns with no flash required. You can now really see the lethality coming in, dealing some serious damage and threatening even the enemy jungler in 1v1s. It's more like he's playing like a poke support sometimes, dashing in, bursting them and then leaving with the phase rush. Enemies will never be on full health when Poppy's running around in their jungle. One very important thing about his mid game is that he wants to start stealing kills. He wants to finish his dead man's plate for extra damage and tankiness, as well as aiming to finish Jack's show to get to late game. With Yumu's he already has a ton of damage, so he rounds out the build with more tankiness to keep him useful in team fights. In team fights, lethality poppy support is not usually his team's main engage. Poppy has great engage herself, but is much more effective as a surprise or flanking champion, always able to use ghost to get to any team fight wherever it is on the map. He wants to sprint in and get his damage off as fast as he can. It isn't that he's one-shotting people, it's that the enemies can't really play the game properly if there's a poppy on top of them. Even their repositioning tools aren't going to work as poppy is too fast for them. She's too quick for me! In high elo, League has very little leeway if you make a mistake, and this pick completely removes that leeway so that all of your safety tools do nothing. There are many games where this player ends up with a lot of deaths. Some of them are mistakes, but a lot of them are because he's trying to maximise his pressure in the team fights. If he can force an enemy summoner or get them to use some important ultimates, it's usually going to end up with his team winning the fight, especially if he's able to use ult to get an important target out of the fight. Late game poppy support has to make a decision, should he look for a flank? or should he try and peel his carry? It all depends on the matchups and the enemy champions, but by late game he's happy to sit on top of his AD carry, use W to deny any engages, and ult someone away to give them a 4v5. In conclusion, I think we should go back to his words that this strategy is not that hard, and even he doesn't think he's that good of a player mechanically. This pick does require some good macro, and if you have that, it's so versatile, able to take all of the kills and carry, or even to play like a real support and peel your fed AD carry. This pick is the exact kind of of champion that counters all engage supports and does quite well even against mage and enchanters. If this were rock paper scissors instead of league of legends then poppy would kind of break the game. The two things you do have to look out for is a champion like karma which he bans every game as it's super difficult to ever reach her and when you go in she can counter your engage with more cc. Morgana is another one that's worth banning. For his full build he starts the support item into yumus, able to then build deadman's plate, then force of nature if needed against lots of magic damage, or jack show otherwise usually ending the game with just these items, or buying more tankiness if needed. For his runes he goes for this phase rush page, with Nimbus Cloak, Celerity, Water Walking, all of the speed stats, as well as Sudden Impact and Relentless Hunter in secondaries for the damage. Our Poppy's Twitch name is amazing, and he plans on streaming in the future, so the link to that is in the description. Thanks again to Alienware as well for sponsoring this video and always supporting off meta. Link to check out their amazing new products is below. Thanks so much for watching.